Terry Tempest Williams's When Women Were Birds, 54 Variations on Voice, 2012, presents an unconventional collection that delves into profound existential inquiries. A pivotal moment occurs a week before Williams's mother's passing, when she entrusts her daughter with a collection of journals, stipulating that they remain unread until her demise. Williams's eventual perusal of these journals reveals an unexpected and startling blankness, three shelves of untouched pages, poised for content. Across 54 concise chapters, the author navigates through reflections on her mother, her own spirituality, and contemplations on the essence of art. Through a meticulously crafted introspective prism, when women were birds ultimately embarks on a quest to understand the nature and significance of having a voice. The book commences by recounting her mother's death and the enigma of the empty journals left behind. The sight of those unfilled pages resurrects the experience of her mother's departure, confronting the enigma that her mother's inner world will remain concealed due to the absence of her words. Williams initiates a discourse on the concept of voice by evoking the memory of her mother's voice as the first one she ever heard. Motivated to inscribe her own narrative within the untouched journals, she opts for a pencil, symbolizing the solace in erasing her words entirely. Williams explores the concept of erasure, detailing its definition and assembling a compendium of synonymous terms. Her father emerges in the narrative, a commanding presence characterized by action, storytelling, and a rugged outdoorsa demeanor. Contrasting her father, her mother's intensity takes a distinct form. Williams recollects her early exposure to Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, an orchestral adaptation of the classic tale, which imparts to her lessons about voice, the equilibrium in nature, and the inherent dignity within every creature. Additionally, she recounts how her grandmother gifted her a copy of A Field Guide to Western Birds, a cherished possession that endures to this day. In the narrative, Williams shares an anecdote from her past when her grandmother imparted the wisdom that humans are an integral part of nature. Reflecting on her fourth grade years, she recounts struggling with a lisp, which prompted her to undergo speech lessons. Her journey to refine her speech led her to engage with poetry, an experience she believes kindled her affection for words and allowed her voice to find its resonance. This prompts her contemplation on the enigmatic concept of what grants an individual their unique voice. Within the context of her Mormon upbringing, Williams notes the tradition of mothers maintaining journals to be passed down to their daughters. While her mother preferred keeping her thoughts secluded, Williams ardently desires her voice to resonate and be acknowledged. She then pivots to explore the realm of art, drawing a parallel between her mother's blank journals and John Cage's piano composition, a deliberate exploration of the impact of silence on human perception. This innovative piece caused discomfort, even prompting some to leave the theater due to its absence of audible music. Williams extends this notion to the realm of art, pointing to white paintings that evoke similar reactions, as they lack conventional imagery and colors, sometimes even evoking fear. Drawing this parallel, she acknowledges her own apprehension towards silence. Exploring the incorporation of bird songs by musicians into their compositions, Williams reveals how these avian melodies became a compass that guided her toward her husband. A serendipitous encounter at Sam Weller's bookstore culminated in their marriage on June 2, 1975. Returning to her mother's influence, Williams presents a personal note from a birthday card acknowledging, however, that her 25th birthday slideshow left her disillusioned and disinterested in her life's trajectory. She embarked on a transformative path, forsaking teaching, postponing parenthood, and enrolling in graduate school. Amid these pivotal decisions, Williams recognized the paramount significance of finding and nurturing her own voice. Williams delves into the concept of humans granting voice to creation itself. She delves into the Adam and Eve creation myth, positing that Eve's actions were not driven by inherent evil, but rather by a desire to seek her own voice through the pursuit of self-discovery. In a parallel manner, Williams is crafting her own narrative of creation, the emergence of her own voice, utilizing the empty canvases of her mother's journals. A poignant incident during a canoe trip, wherein Williams sustained a cut from a falcon near her eye, prompted her to contemplate the suddenness of death. The bird, representing unforeseen elements and events, served as a metaphor for the hidden aspects of life. This incident, coupled with the passing of her mother, acted as a catalyst for her realization that she needed to vocalize her thoughts and feelings. She envisioned her family as a united clan, and two decades later, 
This mental image birthed the concept of when women were birds. Williams gradually arrived at the belief that fostering a community where women's voices are amplified could lead to the flourishing of all involved. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.